On today's episode of our Lake Drive custom build, we are talking about our hydronic radiant heating system. Here in the garage, as well as the basement, we have these Vega rapid grid panels. They are a two inch insulation board with a vapor barrier on top. And we have half inch PEX tubing that runs throughout our six inch concrete slab. Let's hop down in the basement, check on the progress, and we'll walk you through the tips and tricks that we've learned while installing this. So we are installing the, the Vega Rapid Grid system here in the basement as well as the garage. Uh, it's a hydronic radiant system. I have Bob here. Uh, he's over here installing some sleeves on our tubing. Hey, now, Nick. How's it going, Bob? Hey, good, yourself? Good. So Bob's been with Vega for 30 years. Now you're here working with the plumber on site, uh, getting this system installed. We've already done the garage. We'll shoot up there in a minute. Uh, but what are you working on specifically here? The one thing about any type of PEX tubing, doesn't matter whose it is, is that anytime the plastic tubing enters or leaves the concrete, you want to make sure you sleeve it. It's called a hinge effect. If, if say, for example, if my arm's the piece of tubing and, and this part of my arm is the concrete and this part is up into the atmosphere, all the expansion and contraction, the plastic's going to move back and forth. So where's the stress point's going to be right along the concrete. So you want to sleeve that, basically controlling how much that moves. Right. So now it can only move this, as wide as that sleeve. So you don't have to worry about that hinge effect really working like this and, and causing a wear point. So that's interesting because one, one detail I had, I personally had issues with was, I'm going to move some of this stuff over, yeah. but was our vapor barrier. So this right here, this is our, our concrete footing. Yeah. And this, this rapid grit system, the yellow is actually a vapor barrier. All the panels interlock together, um, but we can't get that, mem or that membrane to run continuous up the wall. Now, a couple of details that we had worked on, we talked about adding a vapor barrier underneath it. We talked about adding a vapor barrier on top of it. And we also talked about running a vapor barrier partially on it. The problem with doing anything on top of the system, to your point, that hinge effect, is if I have plastic here and concrete is on top, this might not get encased in concrete. So we're going to run into that issue, right? Yeah, it's not as bad because it's on a, it's on a flat, but you'll have, you'll have concrete here, let's say, right here and then no concrete here. So this will move freely underneath there in expansion and contraction. Right, and, and going, that's a, that's a warranty issue, technically from Vega. Technically from Vega, it's a warranty issue. Anytime you enter or leave the concrete, you should sleeve the tubing to, to prevent that hinge effect. Right, so the reason we're sleeving here is because this is where they, they exit the slab and go to the manifold. Right, the manifold will be placed up here someplace and we'll have these three circuits from the basement coming into here and, and a couple circuits from the garage coming in from down, up above. I guess naturally I'm looking at this as one big room, one big room in the garage. I'm thinking one in, one out, but yeah. you have multiple circuits here. Well, yeah, in the garage, it's not as big a deal, but down here where you're going to have equipment and everything, um, uh, that's the reason why we went left to right here. You're going to have, this is completely underground, this part of the basement. All subterranean here. All subterranean, yep, uh, terranean up in here. And plus you're going to have computer equipment, which is going to generate heat. Right. We have a, yeah, we have a, a mechanical a couple mechanical closets here, stairwell over there. Is that why the spacing is different than over here? Correct. Yeah. We, we widened this out and we kept this a separate circuit. So if you find out at a later time, even though you only have one thermostat controlling these three circuits, right. if you find out that it's too warm back here because of these computers and, and your equipment that you can go to the manifold, it'll be marked. And you can, and they're true lineal balancing valves mm -hmm. on the Vega manifold. So uh, every movement of that valve reduces flow, so it'll reduce BTU output. So here, we've tried to balance it a little bit on the spacing yep. to help you out, but still, I think still you're going to have to reduce it maybe to half flow so, back here. So beyond the thermostat, you actually have additional control because you have multiple manual balancing circuits. Yep. Yep. So out here, we're subterranean, we have mechanical room. We do need to keep, you know, maintain heat in the slab, but not as much as this area over here. Correct. Yeah. So working, we're working out to a walkout basement. So I, I'm seeing, are we 12 inches there? 12 inches there. And then where are we at here? Nine? Nine inches here. Every one of these little squares are three inches. Okay. So we're getting closer to our walkout basement. This is where everything is going to be really cold in right. the winter. Yep. So we want to make sure our heat is distributed more so here because we're not subterranean. Right, you'll leave this, this circuit, this particular circuit, which goes out to, where about here? This one's gonna be running full throttle. 
You right. might be turning this one back a little bit and then that one back even more. This is kind of our baseline full throttle and everything else gets throttled down. That's right, because 85% of your heat loss on a slab on grade uh, installation is within eight feet really from the outside wall. So this is where we want to concentrate the, most of the heat. Obviously we've got windows, which is no matter how good they are, they're the worst our value product of the house. We had talked previously that sometimes they're only heating that portion of the concrete slab. Yeah, a lot of the commercial jobs. We did a big job for the Brookline DPW, a 100,000 square foot building, and we did a study on it. We took the cost of what it would have cost them to, to uh, insulate that whole building, and then, um, and then not only do the perimeter, like we mentioned, 10 feet in. It would have taken them 52 years it came out to pay for the insulation. So to do that center section, right? To do, do the center the section, perimeter. yeah. It, the middle of this slab is going to be the same temperature all year long. Right. With, with your exception here, the only difference here is that we have a high water table there. Right, so we're sitting on the, the pond here. Yeah. So the, that water table runs the risk of building up underneath this slab. It, yeah, and sucking the, if we didn't insulate, that water table would come up. Suck the heat out of here. Suck the heat right out of the slab. Right. Yeah. So this product here is actually a two inch insula insulation with a vapor barrier on top. So that is working in, in our benefit in many ways, meaning that we're separating the entire slab you know, from the ground. Creating a complete radiator on right. top. Total thermal yep. break from the ground yep. and running this radiant throughout. It's a small enough project where that, that, cost, you know, that cost difference isn't as astronomical as that DPW project. Right. But here, you know, it is important because of that, that high water. Yeah, table. most residentials, if you measure 10 feet in and go all the way around this square, there's only a little blocks left in the middle, so you might as well do it. Right. You know? and, and of course, you're, you're going to be installing a thermal break here. Right, so um, we leave this slightly back, <coughs> yep. uh, and you, there's, there's a similar detail up at the garage, but we keep this slightly back so that, that, that concrete Cons slab has kind of like a, a more structural edge yep. to prevent any cracking uh, yep. in this case. And then we'd have that, separation, that thermal separation with uh, foam insulation here. And that acts like an expansion joint to it, whereas exactly. we're going to be heating and cooling the slab. It's going to be moving a little bit. We don't want it to spider crack or anything like sure. that. So that has something, some place where it can move. So the last circuit is over here, right? Yep, this will be... So we have a half bath here, and I know a lot of times we'll do electric radiant in a lot of our projects. Yep. Um, and I see you did the same thing. You kind of keep that radiant yeah. away from the toilet. They don't yeah. want to melt the wax ring. Or yeah, it's or... sort of a... That really doesn't happen unless your system's going crazy. Right. Be because if it, this That's is only... like full throttle plus something. Yeah, this is only going to run uh, 80, 90, 100 on a cold right. day. So that's not going to melt the wax. Right. It's going to get hotter there on a, uh, without air conditioning on a hot summer day. You know what I mean? So that's uh, interesting. You started talking about the temperature. So 80 to 100 degrees is your typical water temperature in the... Well, the way they make houses now, you got the, the best floor system, two inches, mm -hmm. R10. Um, you're going to probably blow in foam all everywhere else. Right. So yeah, most of this is below grade. Um, you're going to be able to heat this with really low water temperature. What's really going to dictate the water temperature is the garage. Right. And that's going to, I mean, that's a total separate zone, but it is running off the same mechanical. Yeah. Equipment. Higher heat loss out there. So that'll dictate the water temperature and then we'll throttle back these circuits according to that. Gotcha. You know? So, um, and then we even did 15 inches on center in this little storage area. Yeah, and this is our mechanical closet. So it's really, like you had mentioned, if any moisture ever does make yeah, it that's basically, in that room, it, yeah. it's able to dry out because we're heating that yeah. slab. Yeah, that's all really. You don't need any heat in there. But hey, well, you know, we get, we get, you'd end up throwing that tubing in the dumpster anyway. So right. So I might as well to, use it up. So these are the fittings that we're using. And these are Vegas fittings. And these are made out of stainless and a uh, super plastic it's called radel r it comes from matter of fact the aerospace industry really a great these fitting. are yeah really great fitting so these are used for not only the radium but also the plumbing throughout right yep yep and how are these installed slide them on as long as you can see the tubing in those windows you're good to go okay then we press it with a, a, a both a battery operated tool or a hand tool and, and that's, that's it that's it it can be done down to minus four degrees, super fitting. And matter of fact, you, as I spun that, you see a little green dot. There's a technology built, built into all our fittings, whether it's the copper, the mega press, uh, the steel, uh, stainless, uh, all our fittings. Anytime you see that green dot, that denotes that if I was to forget to press a fitting, whether it was the copper or the, or the PEX, okay, it wouldn't hold pressure, which is important. A lot of these fittings go together with a little Oh, right. So, pressure. You, yeah, there's like... It would hold enough pressure to make it maybe through a that's, test that's or right. partially through. Then a it test. pops as people are living there, and, and uh, off you go. You got a got a mess. So what is that green dot? That, 
indicating? The, the indicates that there's a feature built into these fittings that if I forget to press this, it won't hold pressure. Gotcha. Okay. So, uh, and, and that's, like I said, in all our fittings, it doesn't matter if it's the metal fittings or the, or the poly fittings. Because a lot of the other fittings, you guys deal with the Pro Press and, yep. the, and the Mega Press for the gas. Yep. Now, is that v Viga's technology as well? Yep, all Viga's. Yep, that's all Viga technology. Why don't we take a run up to the garage and take a look at what, what's going on out there? Sure. <laughs> Up here in the garage, we have no structural posts or anything in this lab. So you were just saying that one of the, the apprentices, this is one of his yeah. first times doing this. Perfect opportunity, you got a nice big square room. Yep. Pretty hard to mess it up, right? Right, two circuits. The circuits are dictated by the size of the tubing. It, it's almost like a straw. You know, if, you, if you're drinking a drink from a straw and the straw's only like a foot long, it's, right. it's easy. But if that straw was three feet long, you'd be, you'd be purple in the face. So is it really, I'm gonna try to dumb this down mainly for myself, that the longer the tube, by the time it returns to the system, it's gonna be too cold. Uh, not too cold, but it's not gonna be able to equally heat that space because it, it loses so much heat throughout. Well, that's more in a snow melting system where we have to worry about the loss of BTUs. Okay. In a heating system, where you're only talking, you know, an average of 25 BTUs a square foot, which isn't much, we're talking pressure drop. We don't wanna to have to use this big pump in the, in the mechanical room to push the t water through the tubes. You know what so I mean? Just like than, the straw. Right, so rather than having a big pump, you have two smaller pumps. Right, so this is two circuits because we're using half inch tubing. The maximum circuit length of half inch tubing is 400 feet to and from the manifold. So I think it was a total of like 700 feet we needed total. So we divided it right down the middle. So we've got basically two 350 foot circuits below the 400. Mm -hmm. We got it sleeved. To, to protect the tubing, um, but that's why. But see, balance in here, you, you won't have to balance. I mean, right. th this is not really living yeah, space. Yeah, I mean, this you is just want to garage. Keep, right. You know, the, one of the, the biggest reasons that we're adding it to the garage is not only for when you pull in here after rain or snow, it dries the slab out, dries the car off, but also we have a master suite above us and we have a ton of plumbing above us. So yeah, we're going to fully insulate that, but the fact that we're able to keep this garage at a comfortable temperature when, it's cl when the doors are closed is gonna also help keep the plumbing and everything above and that master bathroom floor uh, at a very, very comfortable temperature. Yeah. A good point, because that's one of the things, uh, you know, I'll go back, like, like I said, like you said, 30 years and doing Radiant, and that was one of the driving forces at the very beginning you know, cold bathrooms, especially above in bedrooms above garages. Right, I mean, that's one of the biggest complaints I hear in a lot of these new homes is they have this bonus room above the garage that's hard to heat. Yeah. yeah. And it's because the garage is, it's just utilitarian. Yeah, then you're putting unit heaters blowing right. heat around. I mean, and... we have the opportunity here, we have the height here, we have great height. Yeah. Um, so beyond here, I guess the one question I had was there's de there's slight dead spots, not huge. We graded this pretty well. Yep. But every once in a while you're gonna find I'm not gonna find oh, yeah. one for the camera, but yeah. there'll be a spot where there's a small dip, and I had mentioned that. But this is pre this is relatively flexible. We're gonna have six inches of concrete on top of this stuff, yeah. and it's going to conform to that that ground underneath. So as right. long as we're grading within, I mean, a yeah. tolerable amount, yep. this is going to conform to the ground below. The shape of the ground, right. Right. It'd now, perfect. that's one reason why we'd like to use two inch tubes, besides the, the fact of our value and make sure that you, you check your codes, because uh, it changes from town to town. Our 10 is recommended by the state. It hasn't been mandated by the state mm -hmm. yet, but it's recommended by the state for any slab on grade, grade application. So this is our 10, but, but if you were to use one inch and you walked around, you had a little dip. <laughs> Crack. Crack, right. And all of a sudden these pieces are blowing all around the yard and stuff like that. And then that, if you so. get into something thicker, if it's, yeah. if it's a solid, say if it was three, four inches, it might not conform as much. It, yeah, a little more strength to it, right. Right. Because uh, I know in the past we've also done two layers of two inch and then they can kind of act independently and yeah. conform accordingly. Uh, I think the last important note was that we are doing a six inch slab in here and we talked about adding a car post lift. Now, you know, a couple things that we want to make sure that we're noting, especially in the basement, uh, when we're installing our interior partition walls, that we're not going to nail or screw them. Yeah. Uh, basically, when this is done, we don't want to penetrate the slab ever again. Right. As best we can mark, you can mark these out. The walls we'll change. Photograph you know it, that. everything. Yeah. But yeah. there, there is no guarantee that when you drill or fire a yeah. nail into it, you're not, you're yeah. not going to hit it. You want to make sure it's under pressure at all times. 
And uh, while we pour the concrete, that's what I was doing downstairs we'll when you came concrete. in. I was getting it ready to put under pressure, and always, you know, because. Because if an accident happens while you're poor, and as long as the guy doesn't try to cover it up and keep moving, right. um, and tells you, you can fix it with a coupling right there and continue the pour. So uh, that's a that's a that's a really important note because yeah. if we're not if you if we wait, oh, and then nice. yeah, then you're chipping up concrete. Yeah. So you're so this is going to be actively under pressure until the slab is totally placed. Until we hang the manifold, which is until we be, hang, yeah. so you're just going to yeah. fill keep it under pressure all the time and cap it. Yep. Any accidents happen, tell the guys, don't, don't, don't try to cover it up. We can fix it. Right. But if they cover it and then, uh, you know, then it's a, much more of a problem to find. Understood. Awesome. Well, Bob, this was uh, awesome yeah. information. Thanks, I appreciate Nick. it. All right. So you can see as we are doing the radiant in the garage, as well as the basement, that is how we're going to be controlling the heat on these two levels. The rest of the home is going to get a hydronic system, which will run off of the same boiler uh, to run two air handlers in the unit. So stay tuned for the next episode when we meet up with Ross Chathui as well as Stefan from East Coast Comfort and we talk about how we're going to maintain the comfortability of the inside of this home here on the Design Build Repeat Show.